everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we are making the Sand and Sea Beach Tunic. This piece is so fabulous. You can see it worn on the in the pictures, uh, how it's worn, because we are making two panels and it's just a really fabulous piece. It's made with this cotton acrylic blend yarn. It's so light and flowy and super open with all these chains. And it's perfect for the summer, perfect for the beach, perfect for sitting in the sand. So I uh, will get into the supplies we're going to need and then we'll get into making this piece. I'm so excited today. This is such wonderful yarn. Big huge thank you to Willow Yarns for providing this yarn today. I'm using their brand Rise and this yarn specifically is a cotton acrylic blend. It is a size 3 yarn so it's similar to like a fingering weight or a sock yarn. This cotton blend is super light and really soft. I absolutely love this yarn. These balls of yarn come in 475 yards each and I used three balls total. So that comes to about 1400 yards total in this project. So make sure you have something like this or this yarn specifically. I'm using the color sea foam. You can use any color you want in this project and they have a whole line of different colors. I'll link the yarn in the description of this video so you can get Rise Yarn by WillowYarns.com and see what colors they come in availability and it's right at WillowYarns.com. So big thank you to Willow Yarns for providing this yarn today. I love how the color change, I don't know if you can see inside this ball, but this color change is so fabulous and I couldn't really tell when I saw the ball of yarn but then when you see the work Look at how fabulous this yarn works up. It's like an ombre, dark tones, and then it goes into brighter, lighter tones, and then it goes back into the darker tones, and it's just really nice and flowy, wavy. I love it for summer. It's a great project product uh, for the lighter uh, feel of summer projects. So a big thank you to Willow Yarns. I can't rave about it enough, you guys. Just go to their website and get their yarn. <laughs> We're going to also need a size F hook, which is 3.75 millimeters. This crochet hook is from the Etsy shop Would Be Fancy. This is a wooden handled crochet hook, and it's ergonomic, hand carved. It's so fabulous. Fits in the palm of your hand. I crochet like this, but you can crochet like how some people like to hold a pen and crochet, and it's super comfortable. There is worldwide, or yeah, worldwide international shipping, um, so make sure you see if wherever Etsy ships is where you will get these hooks. They're fixed in there so you can choose your favorite size hook and get sets and all that stuff. So the link is in the description for these as well. These are sell like hotcakes you guys. These are so wonderful and very popular in the crochet community. Also, scissors are obviously a good thing to have, and I have on the side here a yarn needle. We're going to use these products, or products a uh, lot too. We're going to use this for sewing, and this for cutting a lot of yarn. We're making this with fringe today, so I want to show you this project. It is so wonderful. We have fringe on the side, we have double crochets, chains, it's just super simple and it's a repeat pattern it's just a repeat of row two so we're just repeating it for the whole project front and back panels and then we sew it up on the shoulders sew it up on the sides and we have our top so it's super fabulous super easy so that is everything oh and the measurements from side to side without the fringe um, this measures 32 inches across Okay, you can make it bigger. Uh, this isn't a multiple of 20 plus two. So chain any multiple of 20 and then add two more chains at, when you make your foundation row. So I am doing um, 142 chains across here and this is uh, 32 inches across. And then from top to bottom, you can make this as long as you want. That is creator's choice. But for my shirt that I made, mine comes to about 23 inches long from the neck to the bottom seam here. So that is all the measurements. That is the yarn we're using and the crochet hook we're using. Big thank you to Willow Yarns. Big thank you to my dad back there for 
filming this entire tutorial and he helped me do all the fringe so I give him credit for uh, helping me get all the fringe attached to this piece <laughs> it was quite a task here so a big thank you to him for doing all that with us and big thank you to you for watching this tutorial make sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and also uh, check out all the social media pages Facebook Instagram snapchat all that place all the stuff is in the links in the description of this video so thank you to everybody who is supporting yarn utopia you guys rock all right that's all i have to say in this intro i know it's quite long but let's just get started and make this sand and sea beach tunic all right we're going to start out with a slip knot so put your short end over your long end then fold this down and then pull your long end through that hole and pull tight and there's your slip knot you can insert your hook and we can begin. So we're going to start this project by chaining 142. <laughs> I know that sounds like a lot, but we are going to chain a multiple of 20 and then add two more chains at the end. So yarn over and pull through. There's one. Yarn over, pull through. Two, three, four, five. Now I'm not going to make you watch me chain 142. So just uh, chain the amount that you need um, and I will meet you back up. I'll come back on screen when I have my 142 chains. All right, so I have my 142 chains, so it's just a long chain here. So this is what it should look like. So right now what we are going to do is work row one. And row one, it says to double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So the loop on the hook does not count. So count one, two, three. This chain right here, we are going to double crochet into that chain. But what I personally like to do is turn this chain toward me. And I like to work into these back ridges here. So that's where I'm going to work in this project. So in the third chain, we are going to double crochet. So one, two, three, right here. Yarn over, go into that chain. Then yarn over and pull through. And then yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. And then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. And that is a double crochet. Now this spot right here, it looks like there's chains right here. That does not count as a stitch right there, okay? Our very first stitch is right here on this row, okay? So the chain two in the beginning of each row does not count as anything. And we need to make 20 double crochets. So that was one. So go into the next chain, yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so that's our second double crochet. Yarn over, go into the next chain, and make your double crochet. And we are going to double crochet until we have 20 double crochets. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. All right, so I have 20 double crochets here, starting with this first one over here. I'm going to count on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And now what we're going to do is chain 20. So yarn over, pull through. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then what we're going to do, you can see I'm holding the yarn onto my hook like this, okay? So it don't uh, drop anything. And what you also could do is yarn over just like this and hold both of those loops on your hook, okay? Because we are going to double crochet next, but we have to skip 20 chains. So don't twist anything here. We're going to count 20 chains, counting with, starting with this next one here, because you can see our double crochet is worked into this one. So we're going to count this next one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. We're going to skip all 20 of those, go into this next one right here, so the 21st one. And with your yarned over uh, yarn and your loop on your hook, go into that 21st chain. Okay, just like that. Oopsie. We want our yarn to be in the back. There we go. 
go into that 21st chain, then yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through both loop or two loops on your hook, sorry, and then yarn over and pull through those last two loops on your hook. And we just double crocheted into that next chain, leaving a big gap here. So there's we skipped 20 chains, double crocheted in the next chain there, and we chained 20 for row one. And there's our double crochet. We want to do 20 double crochets now. So that was one. Okay, so double crochet in the next. This will be our second one. So two. Okay, then three. Next chain. And you can see again, I'm working in the back ridge of my uh, beginning chain here. Now the first chain, the beginning chain working in there is the hardest part, <laughs> really, starting a project. So just keep with it and um, you'll get past this row one. And once we get past row one, it will be a lot simpler throughout the rest of this project. So just keep with it. I'm just going to double crochet in the next uh, 20 stitches here. So I have eight done. So I'm going to double crochet in 20 chains and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. All right, so I just double crocheted into these 20 chains here after our chain 20 space. So now what we're going to do is repeat this and this for the rest of the row. So we are going to chain 20. I'm going to do that really fast here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then we're going to yarn over hold that on your hook like that, go back down to your foundation chain here, skip 20 chains, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, go into the very next one here, okay, insert your hook, and then double crochet into the next, oopsie, uh, 20 stitches or the 20 the next 20 chains and this is going to happen where your work is going to get twisted so just be patient with it and I was going a little too fast <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have three loops then pull through two and then pull through two there we go and without twisting anything make sure to just double crochet in 20 uh, 20 chains then uh, chain 20, skip 20 chains, and then double crochet into the last 20 chains. And when you've done that, I'll come back and show you how to go on to the next row. All right, so I just finished row one here. So as you can see, I just repeated that whole sequence across. So you'll have, it'll start out 20 double crochet, then a chain 20 space, 20 double crochet, a chain 20 space, 20 double crochet, a chain 20 space, and then you're going to end with double crochets in the last 20 stitches. And so with a total of 20, 40, 60, 80 double crochets and three chain 20 spaces. Okay, so that's how this whole pattern is going to be. So going on to row two, row two is our repeat row. So what we're going to do for the rest of this pattern is chain up two, one and two and again that does not count as anything we're going to turn our work around i turn my work this way so that chain up two does not count as anything so you have to work into this very first stitch right here so yarn over go into that very first stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two and we're going to just double crochet into each of these first 20 double crochet stitches, just like this. Okay, I'll go a little bit slower here so you can see. 20 double crochets in the first stitches, in the first 20 stitches. Okay, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five. You can just continue watching me. And then after you double crochet into 20 stitches, then we are going to chain 20 and we're going to skip over the 20, the chain 20 space. Okay. And then just double crochet into the next 20 stitches. 
and then chain 20 and skip the chain 20 space and then uh, double crochet into the next 20 stitches and we're just going to do that all the way across so it's very simple so you can just continue watching me here because I'm just going to uh, finish this first grouping and then I'll let you go on your own for the rest of this panel the rest of this piece we have to make two of these panels and I'm going to do a total of 50 rows for the, my my front and uh, my back so 50 rows for the front panel 50 rows for the back panel okay now this last stitch right here make sure you do double crochet in there I highly recommend counting each time okay because sometimes this last one looks like it's a chain right there but it's actually a stitch okay so just make sure that you are counting your 20 stitches and that's what it should look like Okay, this beginning to the end there. So now we are at the chain 20 space right here. So we are going to chain 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And remember, yarn over, hold those two loops on your hook, jump over to the next grouping over here go into this very first double crochet of this next grouping right here okay and then yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and there's your first double crochet and you just want to double crochet into these next 20 stitches then chain 20 skip the ch chain 20 space here and then du uh, double crochet into these next 20 stitches then chain 20, skip this chain 20 space, and then double crochet in the last 20 stitches. And then just repeat that, chain up two, turn your work, and repeat row two. And that is the pattern. Um, now you can do that for however many rows that you want to do. You can make this as long as you want it to be. I am going to do a total of 50 rows, which will get me to about 23, 24 inches long. Um, but like I said, you can do as many rows as you want, make it as long as you want it to be, make it a really long tunic or short. You can make it a crop tunic or a crop top too. Totally up to you. You can make as many rows as you want and do a front and back panel. So I'm going to do this front panel real quick, <laughs> real quick. It's going to take me some time. <laughs> this yarn is really thin. I'm using an F hook, so it's really small. So I'm going to do this and then I will come back and show you how to fasten this front panel off. And then we'll go on to making the back panel and uh, yeah, continue with this tunic top. All right, I just finished row 50, so this is what your work should look like. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love the colorway. I loved working with this yarn so far. It is so soft and lightweight, and I love the cotton feel of it. It's just so light and, and really nice, and I really <laughs> look at the color. It looks kind of like ombre, where it goes from dark and then to light greens, and it's got like that bluish green undertone which is very yeah it's very, the name is called sea foam so it's a really nice color I love this colorway so when you are ready uh, to be done you can do as many rows of this as you want you can do more than 50 rows I am doing 50 rows here and I'm gonna end this front panel so we're just going to chain one and you need to cut your yarn and then pull it all the way through that chain one there and then pull it tight and that secures that that is secure and uh, fastened off so again this is what your piece should look like looks so fabulous just repeating row two and you can make that as long as you want so obviously it doesn't look like a shirt yet but you have to make two of these panels okay so two of the same exact thing um, you can make like I said yours longer or shorter so I have another one that I just did off camera so just do two of these and I have this one finished as well this one looks super fabulous also okay so this is my back panel so just lay them on top of each other when you are finished and 
we are going to fasten this one off as well. Now, one of your pieces, either your front panel or your back panel, does not matter. We are going to fasten off our, with a long tail for sewing because now we are going to be in the part of our sewing section here. So let me just finish these last four stitches. There we go, chain one to fasten off. We are going to use this for sewing. So I'm just gonna cut a long strand and then pull it through that chain. Okay, so you just have to do that for one of your panels, probably if you wanna do it for both, but um, we're gonna lay these on top of each other. So that's not gonna really make a difference. So. And what I'm actually going to do is sandwich them. So you can see your stitching. I'm going to show you both panels on top of each other. See how you can see your stitches on this panel? See them here. Okay, you can see those kind of sideways V stitching at the top there. If you lay this flat like this, you'll be able to see them. But if you flip this over, you can't see that. Okay, you don't see that at all. If you go like this, you can see them. But this is the back of your work and this is the front of your work. So we want both of the backings to be sandwiching each other. So as you can see, you're seeing both of the fronts here. So I'm gonna flip this one that I have on top. I'm gonna flip it over. Sorry, there you go. So I'm flipping it around. And then I'm gonna lay this one on top of this one, not flipping it. Just laying it right on there okay and I know this is a bigger piece so I'm gonna to try to show you as best as I can how we're gonna make this work okay so we're just gonna line this up and what we're going to do is only sew it together these first two sections so you can see one two three four five six seven sections okay so we have seven sections total we are going to leave the middle three sections this section this section and this section the center three center sections unsewn okay so that's going to be our neck hole okay so what we're going to do is take our long strand that we cut I'll show this side here. We're going to grab our yarn needle. Doo -doo. Yarn needle. I love this little handy dandy little needle holder. You can get these at the Etsy shop, would be fancy. <laughs> and I am going to yarn my needle with that. And what we're going to do now, I'm going to do the mattress stitch. You can do a whip stitch or you can do a back and forth stitching or you could crochet the, along these uh, lines here. But I'm only going to sing, uh, do the mattress stitch on this first section here and then this chain section here. And I'm going to end it right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is just go from the inside out. Okay, so first stitch, inside, out. Okay, next stitch on this side, this inside out, and pull. Inside out, and pull. Inside out, and pull. And just keep doing that until you get to that um, the first and second uh, sections sewn together. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing on the opposite side. However, I didn't cut my yarn uh, long or anything on that side, so I am going to use this uh, yarn from the ball of yarn, and I'm going to sew that side as well. But when I'm fastening off, I will show you how to fasten off, and then we'll go on to the next step after this. <laughs> it's my favorite quote. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I just sewed this um, shoulder here so you can see across here just sewed from here to here okay and I'm gonna fasten this part off so we're just gonna go around a few of the stitches oh and if you need to go into this section here um, that's totally fine that's this double crochet section here that's totally fine so if you wanted to let's see here where am I here 
Okay, if you wanted to go in like two or three stitches in, um, that would be great because that will secure everything. Okay, then to fasten this part off, we're going to just go around the stitches like this. Keep your finger in that loop, then come back through that loop, and then remove your finger and pull tight. Okay, and you can do that once or twice. Okay, just go around. Okay, keep your finger in the loop, come back through the loop, and then pull. Okay, and then we're just going to weave in this end underneath our stitches. Okay, and we're going to do the same exact thing to the other shoulder, and that will secure the shoulders exactly the same way. Okay, then once we have the shoulders done, we can sew up the sides. You can see here I'm just going back and forth with this little strand here just to hide it underneath the stitches, cut the extra. Okay, stretch it out, make sure that's hidden, and that looks good. Okay, so then what we're going to do, so you can see I did this shoulder here, and then this shoulder, I have some fringe on this piece already, so um, I sewed it up here, and then it came in just two stitches in on this panel. Okay, so I did that much, and that's sewn on that shoulder. So this is the neck hole, the head hole, Okay, now if you wanted it to be a little bit more, you can go in even further on this panel if you want the head hole to be a little bit smaller, but I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I want it to be more of a boat neck style. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you this side here. You have the length of your piece. This is the shoulder, and this is the very bottom corners. We're going to line everything up. Okay, and we want to count from the top 15 to 18 rows. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So you can mark this with a piece of yarn or a stitch marker or something. This is going to be the armhole. Okay, okay, this is where we are going to sew from the bottom corner up to this spot here. And then we're gonna fasten off here and have our armhole open. So what I'm gonna do is grab yarn from my ball of yarn. Okay, actually there's a little strand here. Make sure you sew in your ends as you go, just so that you don't have to do it at the very end of your project and have a little bit of a headache <laughs> to do that. So this is just a little strand from my beginning uh, slip knot here. So I'm just sewing it underneath the stitches here and going back and forth okay and then I'm just going to cut this extra all right so now I have the strand of yarn from the ball of yarn here and I'm going to yarn my needle with that whoopsie yarn my needle with that there we go and I'm going to grab a little bit extra and we're going to just go up from, we're going to do the same thing, the mattress stitch. You can do a whip stitch or mattress stitch. But I'm just going to go from the inside. Now I'm just going to go in the chain, like in the space of the stitches. And I'm going to do it in every row. Okay. Oops. Okay, so we're just going to go through every row. Okay. Going back through this one. So through this row and make sure the rows line up. Okay, so row two is here. Okay, row three here. And I'm just doing the mattress stitch. Now obviously mine's a little loose right now, but then I'll tighten it up once I get a, a long way up. Okay. I'm just going back and forth, sewing the side up. And then when you have a little bit of distance, you can pull it tight and then just continue on your way. And once you get up to the top where you are comfortable with the size of your armhole, then you can 
fasten off and I will do that and you can do that to both sides once I have both sides done then I'll come back show you how to fasten this part off and then we can add the fringe Alright, I just sewed up here, so from the bottom corner all the way up to the armhole, and I left 18 rows unworked, and that's where my armhole will be, um, but you can do more or less, um, depending on how, I guess, how big your upper arm is. Uh, and then to fasten this off, just like the shoulder I showed you earlier, just come around, go through and pull, and you can do that once or twice, and then just sew in this end and then you're gonna have to uh, fasten off the bottom as well and sew in that end but I already did that off camera <laughs> and that's secure cut any extra and then do the same exact thing to the other side okay but now we're going to add some fringe and as you can see on my other side real quick I've added fringe already okay so this is what it should look like. Now fringe is optional and you can do more or less fringe. Let's get that all. There we go. And I do need to trim up this side because it looks um, a little less straight. So I just added the fringe and I haven't cut up the side yet. But I'll show you how to add some fringe to the other side. We want to add it. So what we're going to do is actually add it along this seam and then around this armhole. Okay. So I cut a bunch of pieces of yarn. So what we're going to do is just take our measure tool and I cut uh, 16 inches okay you can cut more or less but the 16 inches it's gonna be put in half so these are gonna be 8 inch a little less than 8 inches of strands here so I just grabbed the 16 inch strand and then I just kinda looped it and looped it along just like this along the strand of yarn grabbing a big group I'm not really even counting how many I'm doing and then I just cut my yarn on the ends and that creates multiple strands so just cut the loops just like this and then cut a bunch of them like that and then once you have enough, you can count how many you need, whatever. Um, my dad actually put these all in groups of three. So you want to just lay them out in groups of three strands. Okay. Just like this. And then once you have all of your groupings of three, it's going to be much easier to do. What we're going to do then is come to our piece in the bottom corner. We're going to start at the bottom. And I'm going to put my hook in where the seam is, right here. And then we're going to fold this in half, just like this. Hook it on our hook and pull it through. Okay. And then wrap around the whole, all six strands here and pull through. Like that and pull it all the way through and pull tight and that is how the fringe is going to be attached and we're going to do it in each row up this side so and up the seam area here so right here is next okay grab your grouping of three fold it in half pull it through yarn over and pull through with all six strands and keep pulling and then pull tight okay grab your next grouping next row Right here hook it on pull through just like this pull tight okay and like I said we're just gonna do that all the way up this seam okay until we get to here and then we're going to separate and work around this whole armhole and as you can see on this side that's exactly what I did so here's my bottom okay so I worked all the way up here okay all the way up and then when I got to the armhole 
I actually ended up skipping rows. So as you can see, I did every other row. So skip this one, fringe this one. Skip this one, fringe this one. And I went around the whole armhole, just like that. So there's fringe in the front and the back. But for down this side, it's just the one side. Okay, so just in both layers of your piece. So I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did on this side to that side. And once I finish both sides, uh, we're going to trim this so that this is even all the way up. And then we'll be finished. All right, so I just added all of my fringe to the side. And the last thing I want to do is just trim this up. So make sure all of your strands are pulled nice and tight just like this okay and I have a special tool you can use um, just a piece of like cardboard or a board or something um, but I have this like special tool that's a cutting like ruler and it's called the Omni Angle Wedge Ruler and what I'm going to do on my piece is kind of just slide this down and make it straight across here just so that I can trim the ends straight along here so I have my scissors and I'm just going to cut and I did this already to the other side so I'm just going to do it to this side now and it just goes a lot faster um, but you can measure yours out, your fringe out, and see how long you want it to be, and just trim it to the size. Just be super careful with your scissors so you don't cut any fingers off. <laughs> I'm going pretty fast for the camera, but um, as you can see, my strands are pretty short. There we go. Awesome. So that was pretty quick on my end. And then you can just toss those out and you have our lovely piece. How fabulous. And I already, sew, or I already cut the, this end also. And there it is. Oop, that's the back side. You can choose which side you want to be the front or the back. <laughs> there it is. How lovely. And make sure all your ends are sewn in and you have your fringe. There it is. Thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun to make. I absolutely love it. And I'm ready for the beach. I'm ready for the summer. <laughs> it's going to be so lovely. And wearing this out uh, to the beach or to the pool is going to be so lovely. So thank you so much for watching. Big, huge thank you to Willow Yarns for providing this yarn today. I absolutely loved working with Rise. There are so many colors available in this Rise yarn. So make sure you grab some cotton acrylic blend here and make your cool beach tunic in all different colors. I got the seam foam color, which I really loved the ombre look of it. It just, the work, the work up of it, it looks so different in the ball of yarn, but then when you work it up, it's just so beautiful and so fresh and so clean and I love it. So thank you so much to Willow Yarns for providing this yarn. Big thank you to my dad back there for filming this entire tutorial for us. He's with us every day. And big thank you to you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Check out all the links in the description of this video. There'll be a link to willowyarns.com where you can get this yarn. And there's a link to their Facebook page, all the information about Willow Yarns and my own Facebook information and my Instagram, Snapchat, all that good stuff. So make sure you're following Yarn Utopia everywhere as well. Until next time, happy hooking!